Greetings from English Without Borders. Hello, dear all. We are very happy to see uh, all of you who are joining us uh, via Zoom platform as well as on Facebook. Uh, today, we are very happy to host a special English Without Borders webinar. And we have a great speaker who is right now in the United States. Uh, and uh, let me introduce our host speaker today, Manisha Daulatova. And uh, today she will be talking about Fulbright FLTA program, Gateway to the American Experience. And uh, please, uh, all those who are joining us, uh, use this chance to leave your questions in the comment box on Facebook, as well as in chat box uh, in, uh, via Zoom. And uh, let me give a brief introduction of our uh, guest today. Manisha Daulato is an English language teacher at the Institute of Foreign Languages in Dushanbe, Tajikistan. She has uh, nine years of teaching experience as an English uh, second language specialist and three years of experience teaching Tajiki to foreigners. Manisha has been to India, Delhi in 2019 on an ITEC program, and currently she's a Fulbright foreign language teacher and uh, she's residing at the, you know, uh, in the United States, teaching uh, Jiki at the University of Georgia, USA. And uh, Manisha, we know that it is early in the morning for you in Georgia. And uh, once again, uh, greetings, salam alaikum to you. And with great pleasure, I'm giving the floor to you. Uh, please, uh, you can start your presentation. And afterwards, uh, we'll uh, move to a question and answer session to ask you uh, questions, uh, how to become a successful Fulbright FLK alumni. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Am I unmuted? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, everyone. Hello, the audience of English Without Borders. Um, thank you, Ms. Nasiba, for your introduction. And uh, I am Manisha, as Ms. Nasiba said, I am a Fulbright FLTA foreign language teaching assistant at the University of Georgia. I actually have finished my program, but I am still residing in the US. Um, I will be returning soon to my beautiful country, Tajikistan. And in today's webinar, um, do you want me to share my presentation? Okay, so uh, in today's webinar, I'm going to talk about how to open this gate. As I say, gateway to the American experience. So the, I, I think personally that Fulbright FLTA, it's a, a gate uh, through which you can enter the American life and experience. And in today's webinar, I would love to share my own experience and uh, um, like how to be successful in this process and what is Fulbright FLTA. So, my the outline for my today's presentation will look like like I'll be talking about uh, what is Fulbright FLTA, what will FLTA require from you, what are the requirements for the application process, uh, and uh, I will be talking about preparing to go to US, your responsibility at your host university, and I will provide some tips for the future FLTA because I'm sure that uh, they have chosen someone for the fall 2022. Um, so as we said, what is Fulbright FLTA? Fulbright FLTA develops American knowledge. I think somebody has a question. Mirzo Sharif. He is waving his hand. Okay. Ms. Nasiba, what do you think? Should I answer the question or do you want me to continue with my presentation? Yeah, let, uh, it's better to continue this presentation and afterwards we'll be having a special session for Q&A. Okay, thank you. 
Um, so what, sorry. What is Fulbright FLTA? Fulbright FLTA um, develops American knowledge of foreign culture, teaching assistantship in over 30 languages at hundreds of uh, US universities. And it also the opportunity to develop the professional skills and gain the firsthand knowledge of the US and its culture and people. It also enhances the candidates teaching of languages and expose students to a true understanding of people of different nation. Uh, what will the FLTA role require from you? It's serving as a cultural ambassador, sharing your language and culture, giving presentations on your country and on your culture, learning and experiencing the American culture, teaching in one of the following roles. You will have like, it's not only teaching, but teaching has three roles. As a language instructor, teaching assistant, or language tutor in an intensive course, which they call flagship programs, or volunteering on campus. And also taking at least one course per semester. It has to be on American history and culture. You also have the option of taking as many other courses as you want in any faculty that interests you. Okay, what are the requirements of the application process? So you have to hold a bachelor or a master degree. You have to have three years of teaching experience, at least three years of teaching experience. And you have to have the language proficiency test, the assessment test, which is TOEFL or IELTS, it depends. Uh, so actually the application process has four steps, application four, interview, English language assessment, and final selection. In the application form, the US Embassy in Dushanbe will review all your application forms. They will select several candidates to be interviewed. And the next step uh, will be interview. Again, the US Embassy in Dushanbe will interview the candidates and choose a few semi-finalists to move forward to the English to the English language assessment. Then the next step will be um, English language assessment. So in the English language assessment, the semi-finalists will take the TOEFL or IELTS test for the English language proficiency. And uh, the last step is uh, the final selection. The Fulbright State Department, which is in the US, will choose the finalist. Application process. For the application process, after you see the announcement, just get your yourself ready. Start it as soon as possible because time will be very short after the announcements. It's only, you will have only two, three months to get your ap application ready. And I would also encourage to invest to be successful. Give it everything you have. You will not regret making some sacrifices, spending some time, effort, money, and uh, take support from people who are experienced, who, who went through this process. And also uh, practice writing essays. The structure of the essays is crucially important and you have to make them concise. Uh, I would also encourage you to improve your English, not just academic English, the communicative daily language as well. And uh, you don't need the TOEFL results to apply for the program because I know uh, many people when they see that it requires uh, language uh, proficiency, they will just fail. But you really do not need the TOEFL results to apply for this program. If you are selected, the US Embassy will arrange it and don't worry about the pay. I know it's a little bit costly, but the US um, uh, Embassy will pay the cost of the test. 
and uh, complete all the application tasks. As I said, you have only three months to prepare. It's not enough at all, at all. And uh, don't leave uh, the tasks until the last minute because uh, many people do it, I know. And they see that they have three months and they will be kind of very relaxed. But actually you have to be very serious because it's a very time consuming application. And uh, I would encourage you consider it as your job, make a daily schedule and follow it. And uh, be honest and very, very accurate in your application because all the things you will be sharing, they will be checked. And uh, don't rush, give yourself some time and don't guess. Uh, as you see the uh, announcement for the Fulbright FLTA, and uh, I think the US uh, embassy will provide some contact information. So if you have any question to clarify, you have to contact them. They are very nice and they will get back to you as soon as possible with all the details. And uh, the last point is submit your application. Submit your application and be very, very, very patient because uh, it will take some time. The answer may come in fall, I think in three, in four, five, from three to five months later after you're submitting your application. Okay, getting the answer. I'm kind of going like very step-by-step, step, okay? Um, getting the answer. All the applicants, whether they are selected as candidates or not, will receive an email with their results from the US Embassy. If you are not selected as a candidate, don't ever give up. As a famous English proverb says, I learned it actually from the US here. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Uh, so what happens with a selected candidate? If you are selected, as one of the several candidates, congratulations. The stress, work, and fun is just beginning. And the candidates who are selected will move forward to the next stage, which is interview stage. Uh, in the interview stage, the US embassy will schedule a Zoom interview with each candidate. I don't know what, what will happen with uh, uh, this year FLTA because I don't think that COVID is uh, that much strict this year. So may, they might be having the uh, interview in person, but in my case, I had it over Zoom. So you, the US embassy scheduled a Zoom interview and I, like, I had it, it lasted like from 15 to 20 minutes. After the interview, the U.S. Embassy will choose a few semifinalists. It's very competitive. They will send all candidates an email to notify them about the result of, of their interview. Okay, tips for your interview. Do not be afraid and nervous because I know like uh, interviews are very intimidating. They will just want, they, they just want to get to know you. They just want to know you as a person. Be relaxed and be yourself, okay? And I, as I said, be honest. Have some of your own questions prepared because you will have a chance to ask some questions. So if you are prepared with your question, it will give you confidence. And the... Uh, also, please review your essays before the interview. It's very, very important. Why I say this, because some interview question may be based on what you have written in your essays. So they might ask you some question from your essays. Uh, and as I said, the, the, the first step was application process. The next was the interview. Let's talk about the English language assessment. And also the US Embassy will arrange TOEFL to assess your English proficiency. 
because they need the specific like uh, score from you. That's why you have to take the TOEFL, uh, which is an assessment. Like it just to assess your proficiency. And the US embassy, don't worry, as I said, don't worry about the cost at all. Uh, the US embassy will pay the cost for your test. Tips for your uh, language assessment test. If you are taking it, TOEFL, IELTS, I think they, they'll ask you to take only TOEFL in Tajikistan. So improve your overall English. Don't focus only on TOEFL because TOEFL is uh, like they will check your English, your knowledge holistically. Don't focus on only the academic English. And focus, as I said, on daily uh, language use as well. Learning test, test taking strategies is very, very important. For example, you have to learn how to cope with stress, timing in different sections, etc. And practice, 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 and again, practice. Because by taking several, you can be like confident by taking several unofficial practice or mock tests. Final selection. So the last step is final selection. The Institute of International Education, which they, the short form will be IIE, will review the semi-finalist files. Files it uh, like in a, it contains up your application, your interview result, your TOEFL result, and they will choose the finalist Fulbright FLTA. Full FLTA stands for Foreign Language Teaching System. The IIE will send an official email to the semi finalists to let them know if they have been chosen as a finalist or not. The finalists move, will move forward to the next stage. Okay, what is the next stage? Hooray, preparing to go to the US. Finalists are responsible to uh, arrange and pay for their own medical examination and uh, for their international passport. And from the US embassy side, so you, the US embassy in Dushanbe will do your background check and uh, will arrange your visa, your US visa. And IIE will match you with the host university, buy your air ticket, provide an orientation program uh, where you will learn about the American culture and the education system. At this orientation, you will meet the new FLTAs from all over the world. It's a great place for networking. After the IIE matches you with the university, your host university will contact you directly. The person who is responsible for this program at that universe, or the host university. And uh, they will help you to find housing before you arrive in the US. So don't worry about if you have never been to US, they will arrange everything for you. Arriving in the US. So after arriving in the US, the US, uh, the host university will arrange for your transport from the airport. Okay, they will arrange a transport to get you for it from the airport. Don't worry about that. Help you get settled in your housing if you haven't found it. Provide you food and accommodations until you are in your own housing, if you haven't found a, a housing yet. And also they will help you to get SIM card, get a bank account, get a social security number. And uh, they will also give you a tour of, of the town and the university and help you to learn how to do grocery shopping because they have a variety of items in their grocery shopping is very overwhelming. And uh, they, will, they will help you how to use the transportation system, especially if uh, uh, you live in the small cities, which are the car dependent cities, you have to have, like you have to have, you have to have someone to explain you about the transportation system. You have to learn it. It's 
it's a little bit different compared to Tajikistan. Um, they will give you orientation to the university's technology, library, and other resources at your host university. Okay, your responsibilities. So I think I have mentioned in the previous slides. So you will have three main responsibilities in your host university. You will teach your language. You will share your culture. You will be a cultural ambassador. And at the same time, you will be a student. You will be studying. So you will have two main roles, being a teacher and a student. It's not easy, I'll tell you. Um, so as a teacher, as a teacher in my host, uh, as a teacher in, uh, you will have three roles. You can be the main teacher. You can be assistant to the main teacher, or you could be a language tutor in intensive courses uh, in, in your host university. Uh, so in my case, my teaching role was the main teacher because these are my cute students. Um, so in my case, I was a main teacher because I didn't have anybody who taught Tajiki at that university. So I was a teaching assistant, the professor, I did all the thing myself. And I taught um, in both semester, fall and spring. In uh, fall semester, I had elementary class, but in spring semester, I had elementary and uh, intermediate class. So I taught once one class in fall semester and two classes in the spring semester. Okay, uh, so tips. Um, use interactive methods of, your, uh, of teaching. Get, get them to communicate in class because you will be the only person who could motivate them and you will be the only person who they can listen to the language and motivate them by making fun and interesting lessons. Uh, actually, Tajik language is a very beautiful and amazing language. So it up, I think it's up to us how uh, we present it. If we make it fun, it will be very interesting and it will be very motivating and they moti it motivates them to learn and keeps them motivated. And also be prepared for your class. Get your, get your lesson plans ready in advance. Some people think like, oh, this is my native language. I can teach it. It's not a problem. No, you have to get your lesson plans ready. It's not about knowing the language. Teaching a language is different. Okay, uh, as I said, you will be a student. You will have three roles. Cultural ambassador, you will be teaching, and you will be a student. As a student, you are required to take some courses. You must take one course, I think I have mentioned it before, you must take one course each semester on American history or culture. You can, you can also choose any other courses as you wish. Most likely that you will not take courses for credits, it means for marks. So you won't be doing any assignments, it's actually very fun you will audit the classes. So auditing means like you won't be getting any credits for the class. You will be just uh, observing um, the class. You will participate, but uh, you don't do homework, tests or marks. If your university lets you take the courses for credits, you will do all the homework and, assi and the assignments. It's very, very stressful because our education system is very different from the US Arabic education system. As a student in university classes, you observe American teaching techniques, okay, styles. And when you go back to, to your country, you will apply these teachings in your own classes. Or you can also apply them in your own classes while you are in the US. It will also re like re really help you. Tips uh, for taking the courses. Please choose courses which are very relevant to your field. 
don't take too many classes. It's very overwhelming and it's very stressful and it's very time consuming. You need to spend a lot of time. Always discuss before choosing your class, discuss it with your faculty advisor. Discuss with them, uh, like, this is my field and uh, what courses are relevant to my field and what courses I can take. It will also really help you. Okay, go place, go to go places, see things and meet people. The best way to learn about any culture and people is to see the real life places and their roles in the families. And I would really, really encourage you, please travel as much as you can. You will have enough money because the Fulbright will pay you enough money to travel, to try different cuisines and to do a lot of things for fun, of course. And you will be also able to like to save some money as well. Don't worry about it. Uh, why I say to travel, because every state has its own subculture. They are very different from each other. Very different. Different. So you will learn a lot within the U.S. Uh, and uh, I also want to say that I visited as much as I could. So these are the places, these are the states which I have visited. Washington, Maryland, Virginia, New York, Rhode Island. These are the New England states. Uh, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina. I'm actually not in South Carolina. I'm not in Georgia. I finished with my program and I'm staying uh, with one of my American friends for one month. And the North Carolina and Alabama. I actually, as you see here, I uh, was not able to go to the West. I was in North, East, South, but I couldn't make it to the West. So maybe next time. Okay, make friends with everybody. Participate in as many cultural events as possible because this is the way to learn about the culture. Holiday celebration, parades, football game, church services, because the religion is a part, is a big part of the US culture as well. Dances, birthday parties, museums, road trips is very, also very fun because it's uh, US is a very huge country. Like 15 states, I think, are 15 countries. Uh, visit restaurants, uh, try new dishes, try new cuisines, and uh, go and see the nature parks and do picnics and go to wedding and funerals, etc. Why I did, why I mentioned all these activities? Because while I'll stay here, I did all these activities with uh, the Americans, with the local people. Tips for future Fulbright FLTAs. These tips, uh, some of them are for the Fulbright FLTA, which has already been chosen, and some of them for the people who are going to apply for this program. So the first thing, do not miss the application deadline. Be very accurate. I said I have uh, been saying it several times. Try to find housing close to your university. Uh, why I say this, because uh, if you live close your, to your university, your host university, uh, you will have access to all the resources of the university. It will help you a lot. And uh, because some of the uh, towns in the US, uh, as I said, they are very car dependent. And if like you cannot do whatever you want if you live far from the university and the, having a car, if the, the town is small, having a car is very important. But if you are good in making friends with others, so your friend can give you always the right. This is what happened to me. And also volunteer in the community, tutor at school and do, and, uh, do service. I actually... Uh, 
also tutor at elementary school as well. I had two Spanish students. It was like, it was a volunteering job. Um, and I did it once a week for three months. And uh, also remember your purpose as, as an FLTA. So your purpose, the, the main purpose of a Fulbright FLTA is to, is to experience American culture. As I said, they give you enough money to do all these things. And uh, one more very important thing is please learn about your history because people will be asking you all the time uh, about your, the history of your country, okay? So yeah, thank you. This was my presentation and this is a question and answer session. If you have any questions, if I know the answer, I will be happy to answer. If not, let me see. I actually have invented one of other one uh, another formal FLTA. Hopefully, he is. Uh, I don't know if he is. Uh, no. Okay. Thank you, Manisha. Like for uh, such interesting uh, presentation. Hopefully. I think, like <laughs> yeah, I think all those uh, who. Uh, who, who were considering to apply to Fulbright FLT, they got more confidence. Uh, and I hope that uh, they still have time till the deadline to apply. Yeah, for yeah. yeah. As so, I said, you never regret. Spend some time, sacrifice some time. Never ever you will regret. Yeah. Because it's a real a gateway through American experience and through American culture and life. Yeah, uh, thank you, Manisha. So uh, now we can move to questions and answers. So, uh, and um, so let's start. So I would like to ask my question to you first. So mm -hmm. uh, I know, uh, so the applicants usually are so inspired to apply for, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's not like uh, always like that, that once you apply, you will be, uh, you will be selected, right? So mm -hmm. in your case, how many times you have applied and how many attempts you did and how, uh, after how many times you have been selected? Uh, thank you, Ms. Nasiba. It's a great question. I think I was very lucky for my application and I tried very hard. Like it was my first attempt. I applied the first time and I got selected. The reason why I got selected, because I was, I, I spent a lot of time. I spent money. Uh, I spent, like, I did my best to get this opportunity. It was not something, oh, I did it and I got it. You know what I mean? Like, I really, like, tried for it. It was my, so my answer is it was my first time. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. So uh, in my case, it was like, yeah, the second time, <laughs> because I yeah. was also Fulbright FLTA long, long ago. But yeah, I would also encourage people and yeah. applicants to apply. When I, when I applied, more. I didn't expect, oh, I will be selected. I just said, oh, okay, if I'm not selected this year, I'll try it next uh, year again. Like, at least you will learn a lot through the process. The, the process itself, the application process will teach you a lot. So it's uh, kind of, um, yeah, I would have tried again if I would not been selected. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and also we have uh, some questions in the chat box and we can see like, you know, uh, that all those who are attending raising their hands. So we'll give uh, mm -hmm. them the or to ask the questions. I will be happy. If I know the answer, I'll answer. If I don't know. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, have you developed any new materials on teaching grammar, Tajik grammar, speaking, writing, listening, or vocabulary? If yes, is it possible to share with those who will be selected? Uh, you mean uh, teaching? Uh, materials for teaching Tajik. Teaching. Oh, teaching materials for teaching Tajiki. So in my case, what I did as I am an English teacher, I tried to kind of modify all my uh, like English methods, okay? 
into I kind of applied them in my uh, uh, teaching Tajiki. Yeah, I have some lesson plans. I did a lot of lesson plans. I can share. That's not a problem. And uh, yeah, I have some materials uh, for teaching Tajiki. I'd be also happy to share. Mm -hmm. And I can give you also the link. Yeah. The thing is, we don't have the valid resources for teaching Tajiki. This is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was a big problem. The, the book which they provided me at the university, I uh, really did not like it because it's not appropriate to their level. That it says beginner, but some of the things they have in that book, it's advanced level. So it was kind of very frustrating. Like I like going through the books. I mod, I have added. I have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, can you share what new strategies have you used to teach Tajik language? Um, the like the new strategies. Mm, that's a good question. So, in teaching, like I did a lot of role playing. I uh, uh, I have some listen to Tajiki uh, language a lot. I try to find like some uh, YouTube channels where uh, the Tajiki is uh, very neutral. You know, it's not very uh, literal. It's not very street language because you know uh, we when we talk about Tajiki language, it's kind of street and uh, literature language. You have to teach two languages. So yeah, I try to use uh, um, some YouTube channels. I, I have some listen a lot to Tajiki language because I, you will be the only person if, uh, if uh, your language is not that much known because Tajiki considers as one of the critical languages, not uh, all the universities even know about Tajiki language or Tajikistan, that's very, very stressful. Mm -hmm. But I was able like to motivate my students and that they took my course for two semester and they are going to take it for the full semester 2023, 22, which is, this is a big result. And also, um, I think I was uh, the only FLTA who had six students for Tajiki language. This is what my advisor said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's great to know. So you have inspired your students to continue studying Tajiki. That's I great. tried. I did my best. Yeah, so great. Good on you. Okay, so now, uh, so Nauruza would like to ask a question. So Nauruza, you can unmute yourself, please. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. My, I'm Miss Nauruza. Uh, I'm uh, teaching English uh, for three years for a long time. Uh, about Fulbright, uh, I know. <laughs> Last year I applied for Fulbright, but I think it was another program, okay. uh, like master program or something like this. Uh, so the thing that is now, it is another program, right? It's a teacher assistant. Do you, want, do you want me to answer to your question first? Yes, there are two types of Fulbrights, degree and non-degree. So uh -huh. the Fulbright FLTA, this is Foreign Language Teaching Assistant, it's a non-degree program. By the end of the program, you won't be getting any like certificate, okay? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a cultural exchange program, okay? Uh -huh. But the Fulbright you are saying is that we have the Fulbright. I don't know much about that Fulbright, yes. but I know that it's a degree program and you can do your master degree, master or it's kind of for the graduate study. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, so my question, the main question is that uh, for this one, for this program, uh, they are shortlisting the student according to their skills or their level of English or like what are the pro what should be the priorities of a student, the applicant? Like uh, I should focus on what part of my good part of myself on my application that they will shortlist me. Okay. Um, thank you for your question. It's a very good question. And um, before applying to this program, I actually had also had this in my mind as well. 
So what I would suggest, and though my answer would be, it's uh, not about English. Mm -hmm. It's not only about, for example, oh, I know English, my level is at more than ad like advanced. So if I apply, I'll be selected. No, it's not only about the English. It's about your personality. It's about how you represent yourself in the U.S. when you are out of Tajikistan. It's about your essays. How would you share your culture? How would you share your language? And how do you cope with it? Like it's, it's all together. Of course, you have to know your English has to be in a certain level because you will be teaching at the academic setting. It's not easy at all. Mm -hmm. if, you are, if you are a professor, if you are not an assistant, so you will have the main mm -hmm. role. It means like they will ask you any question they, they want, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so your English has to be in a certain level and uh, you have to get like, it's not about English. It's about your application. It's about your assets. It's about your personality. It's about how you represent yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And uh, by uh, saying that how you represent your culture there, you mean that there will be some... Um, I don't know, some shows and you're representing like the culture, you're able to show the Tajik dance, you're able to show some how to cook or <laughs> yes. kind of like this. So uh, as I told you, you will have three main roles in your health university. You will be <laughs> teaching your language, you will be a cultural ambassador, you will be the president of Tajikistan, you will be, you will be, uh, representing the whole 10 million people in Tajikistan and its culture, okay? You will be the only one at the university. And the, your third role is as, as a student. So as a cultural ambassador, of course, you will be required to have a presentation on your culture. It will be publicly open. It will be mm -hmm. one time, right, Ms. Nasiba? If I am not correct, you can correct me because Ms. Nasiba has also been in this program. So you will be sharing your culture. You will have a presentation. You will present your culture as uh, much as you can. You will cook osh. You will dance. You will, yeah, is yeah, just share about your culture. How how did you apply all this ability in your application? Like we are now interested in the application uh, process. So yeah, we yeah, will just dance there. We will do all the required things. So yeah, we'll it's that, <laughs> that things. But how yeah. to show it on the application that yeah to to uh, show them the video resume uh, or something like that. Uh, now okay. Rosa, so yeah. Now uh, my yeah. Question. Please go ahead. Yeah. Let me just add in. So uh, now, Ruza, uh, so get familiar with the application process, first of all. Yes? Exactly. You need, yeah, you, you need to be, um, you know, sure that you uh, properly answer all the questions. And because since they, they will be a good limit, please make sure that you will be very creative, first of all, in writing your essays, short essays. And so, you know, the first is application process, but the second one is interview. So the interview is again, very essential yes. because uh, if you are shortlisted, they want to see uh, again, as Manisha mentioned, your personality, how you represent yourself, how you represent your culture. You become a cultural ambassador. You become mm -hmm. a cultural ambassador and they want to verify that uh, you are the right person for this program and you will make most of that. So uh, therefore, I would recommend to stay in touch Manisha because she's fresh from her field and she can just, you know, give you more tips. Uh, and of course, I was probably the first FLTA who, who, uh, yeah, who was selected in Tajikistan in 2006, long oh. ago. But anyway, yeah, but anyway, like, you know, uh, so over the years, the program has evolved and also like the application process as well as the interview process, it has been evolving. And uh, there are some modifications. So I can tell from my own experience uh, from 2006, but uh, since Manisha, uh, she's uh, currently uh, just doing her FLTA, so she can uh, give you more relevant tips to that. So please uh, get connected so you can exchange emails and phones and just, yeah, stay in touch. Yeah, by the way, can we? 
can we and, be in touch like to write message or something or like of course of course be, like, uh, actually, so I, it will be very easy until i get back to tajikistan i need to do a lot of i need to get done a lot of tasks so of course just if you leave me a message i would be happy to get back to you with wow. as much information as i can and also, I also want to add something here, as I mentioned in my presentation as well, interview is also very important. So before the interview, like review the essays which you have written, because as I said, they will give you like a chance to talk and uh, they, they will ask you questions out of your present or out of the essays you have written. And also get like get the question ready because like I don't know it's the same for everybody, but in my case, like I was asked if I have any questions. So if you ask a question, it shows your like enthusiasm, it shows that you are very interested in this program. It's all for your benefit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you You're for welcome. the detail. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Navruza. So uh, let's move to the next question. Uh, so uh, our next question, uh, Manisha, how did you motivate and engage your students in learning Tajiki language? Okay. Um, I sometimes cooked. I sometimes feel like feed them with food, with Tajiki food. I cooked samosas two or three times they really liked and I let they're like oh my goodness we have to come to class again because you know is uh, like food is a bridge between cultures between people like and uh, sometimes um what did I do I did a lot to, it's not easy to um motivation what motivating them it's very very kind of difficult and easy because you will be the only person you have planned everything to get them connected you know to the language um, I used a lot of interactive methods as I said role plays I uh, I uh, uh, I used a lot of like videos I sometimes had other Tajik people to get them in contact with my students it also motivated them like, for example, I asked my students, please, could you talk with my students in Tajik? You can learn English from him and he can learn Tajik from you. It also motivated them a lot. Once they were able to text them, they were like, oh, my goodness, like in, in three months. If you have seen my uh, video, which I have shared, the guy who is uh, talking, but he was very, very like self. He started like he applied himself 100 percent, let's say. And the, his level of English is uh, of Tajiki is beginner. He has taken it only for three months, but you see how he talks. And I uh, kind of connected him with one of my students back in Tajikistan, and he got very very excited about it when he was once he was able to communicate with uh, the native speakers. So yeah. So, uh, and also apply like as all the applicants are English teachers. If you don't have experience in teaching Tajiki, you can apply all your methods for your English classes into your Tajiki class. It also works well. Mm -hmm. Just be creative. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Manisha. So, Manisha, I was wondering, did you do any Nauru celebration just to? you know, to show, to demonstrate how Nauru's is celebrated in Tajikistan and just, you know, to let your students experience, for example, cooking sumanak or like, you know, doing half tin, half chin. Okay, I actually was not able to demonstrate it myself, but what I did, so they have the Persian community in, on campus. So what I did, I invited all my students to the Persian event and we all went together. They all put on the, the national dress. I actually brought two, three outfits. So I shared with my students and some of them put their talkie and uh, we all went together. So they, they get the really good exposure of the Navros holiday. And of course I taught them in class, like I shared them about all the, you know, 
like teaching a language is not about the language, it's about learning the, their culture as well. Of course, I talked in my class about this holiday when they had a chance to experience it with uh, the Persian community. Yeah, and uh, in my presentation with that, which I had it for, like it was publicly open, it was for everyone. I also shared about my, uh, about the Navros holiday. Like it was a specific kind of, uh, a specific uh, time, like kind of, I devoted a lot of time to explaining the holiday and Navruz was one of the big holidays, which I share. Yeah, great, thank you. Thank you, Manisha. So uh, next question, like, what did your students most like about your classes? Oh, I don't know. All of them said this was a fun class in the fall and spring semester. They really enjoyed because uh, they have improved a lot during like two, three months. Like I taught them to read and uh, write in Tajiki in two weeks. You know, the Tajik alphabet is very easy. You don't like, we have one sound and one, one, one shape and one sound. Uh, so I kind of uh, get them, uh, got them uh, learn how to, uh, read and write in Tajiki and it uh, kind of motivated them a lot and uh, yeah yeah great so uh, we have a couple more questions uh, so uh, one of the questions so uh, according to your video we can see that your students made a huge progress in learning Tajiki what uh, can you say about your English has it significantly improved Oh my gosh, yes, big yes, yes, it has improved a lot. I can't say it myself, but all I, all of my friends, uh, um, I kind of, they say that it has improved a lot, but I could say, so I was able to stay with Americans. I stayed with four uh, American students. One of them was a, a graduate student and the three of them were in their undergrads. They were actually, all of them were senior students, very mature. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, even they said like, oh my goodness, your English has improved a lot because like, the English which we hear in Tajikistan is different from what we hear in the US. They talk very fast. It was a one, one of my cultural shock when I got the first time I got here because I'm like, my goodness, I don't know English. What are they talking about? Especially when you are in the South. South has a, like very specific accent, specific dialect, specific way of talking. So like you... It's, it's, it's the same language, it's just different accent. You know, they have like, they are very speedy. They speak very fast. So yeah, it has improved. I could say it has improved a lot. Yeah, thank you, Manisha. That's really great. So we have a question from uh, Saule Rahmetova. So uh, I'm not sure so if, if I get this question correctly. She's asking, can we choose a country for studying? I think maybe she means here the state or, you know, the uh, yeah, the country for studying. So maybe she means here, like, you know, I don't know. So if you, if you have the answer, please. Can you please uh, repeat yeah, she's, it again? She's asking, idea. can we choose the country for studying? I don't know what does she mean here. But anyway, like maybe she means here yes, as the state, because I know that for Fulbright FLT, they usually, uh, this, you know, the university selects, right? The finalists. Um, actually, the, I think the IIE, the uh, Institute of International Education will select the finalists, but they will match it with the university. If the university requests, they will get enough. Like they cannot send it to any university they want. You know what I mean? Like it has to be requested from a university to get an FLTA from IIE. So for example, in my case, only the, I was, I am the only FLTA in the US now for 2001 and two, 2021 and 2022. They had only one place available for Tajiki language, which was University of Georgia. So I didn't have any other choice, you know, if it's matching the university, I had only one university in my list because 
the they like only one university requested from IIE to have a Tajiki like instructor. So no, you cannot choose any. If you mean any states, you cannot choose any state you want because while well, yeah, they get you into the level of matching the universities. Uh, yes, yeah, so matching the universities, you will have in your list the universities available, which they have, like, which they requested from IIE to have um, the Fulbrighters. Yeah, thank you. So, next question How about Tajik music and movies? Have you introduced them to your students as part of your uh, culture teaching? Yes, I did. I did. And uh, one of my uh, uh, students' favorite song was. Uh, uh, I don't know. Let me think. It was Dar Kunji Dilam Ishki Kasi Khona Nadora. It's from Shabna Bisurayo. He sang it all the time he entered the classroom. Teacher, Dar Kunji Dilam Ishki Kasi Khona Nadora. I'm like, do you know what you're saying? <laughs> it means something else. But he's like, but I love it. I love this phrase. Yes, I was able to introduce them with Tajik music and the uh, yeah, and culture and movies. We also have watched two movies, I think. Yeah, that's great. So you tried to do your best to provide I did. Full, full exposure to Tajik language by bringing into your class, like, you know, cooking them more music, like, you know, uh, Tajik language itself and also dancing and yeah, like, uh, celebration of eats of, of holidays so that's great uh, they they yeah actually you know the students really like to experience all those stuff thank you so and uh next question who was your fulbright flta mentor so uh, so far i know that there is also mentor mentee like you know uh kind of uh, assistance available for those who are selected so who was your mentor and how uh, you know, have you have you felt that you received like empty of uh, uh, plenty, plenty of uh, help and assistance from your mentor? Uh, so um, I had an advisor and uh, I had a supervisor. So kind of my supervisor was the assistant for my advisor since he was a senior professor at the university and he is uh, 72 years old but he is very active. You will never say that he is 72. He looks really good for his, for his age. He had an assistant and she was very, very helpful. Uh, I lived like uh, far from campus. I live out of campus, off campus, they call it. I didn't live on campus and my housing was like 15, 10 minutes away from campus, but all my roommates, they were very, very generous and very good and uh, they always offered me a ride whenever I needed to go somewhere. I, they just like took me with their car, you know, and if I needed uh, to go somewhere, but they didn't find out, like you, I, I would, oh, I was, oh, like I always arranged my ride if I wanted to go somewhere because I live off campus and it was my choice because I wanted to stay with Americans, okay? Then uh, if I needed something, so my supervisor was always there for me. She took me to grocery shopping. She took me to the like whatever I wanted. Yes, I would say she was very, very, very helpful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Manisha. Now, Rosa, uh, if you have any questions, like, you know, the last uh, question. I'm so sorry. Yes, uh, uh, again, I have it's kind of technical ones, but uh, I joined you a little bit later. Uh, do we fill the uh, application on like US Embassy? Is it this one? Uh, yes, if you want, I can hold on. Can we have, because I have a link, but it is telling yeah. me that you cannot, if... uh, can I share my screen and show you like what I mean? Yes, of course, if you can. I'm like, like, um, uh, because today in the morning I was doing this uh, thing. Can you see my uh, screen? Mm -mm. No. Unfortunately, I'm uh, not able to uh, see it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ah, here, here. Uh, so here I have the link, this one, mm -hmm. right? 
and yeah. I'm like, I created the account and this is what it uh, tells me. I'm like, why? So what I would uh, encourage you to do, just uh, if you open the uh, announcement, the US Embassy have some contacts available. So you can just uh, email them or uh, like call them directly and ask them your question. They're very, very I'm nice. They will get uh, like you, they will get back to you as soon as possible if you email them. But if you call them, they're always uh, there for you. Ah, uh, this the ah uh, okay okay I have it okay. Yeah. Uh, just if you have any question, just don't be afraid. Don't guess anything. Uh -huh. Call them, ask them for clarification, and uh, like as I said, be very accurate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, My pleasure. So actually, yeah, actually you can uh, find, you know, the link shared by uh, our, uh, uh, by, by my colleague Zuvrol. She's sharing it like uh, in the chat box, you can find it. And once you click, once you click, uh, it will, yeah, it will take you. So let me do a quick uh, screen share. So you'll be able to see that. Okay, just a moment. So. Uh, so let me just, so actually, oops, sorry. So, okay, uh, just a moment, yeah. So if you go here and you have just exchange programs, if you click on that and if you scroll down, I'm sorry, Miss. Oh, yeah, it's here now. Yeah, you can see that, right? Yes. Okay, good. So yeah, and if you scroll down, so I'm trying to scroll down. Oops, just oops. Yeah. So here, uh, you can see that. So if I'm not mistaken, it should be some. Okay. So. Oh, this is Fulbright Student Program. So uh, my internet is not working properly. So it should be somewhere here. So can you see if you um, can see that? Yeah, uh, if uh, it's in the, I oh, think it was here. the last. It's here. So I got it. Yeah. Yeah. And good. yeah, once you click, yeah, Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Assistant Program. FLTA. FLTA. Yes, this is FLTA. And deadline is August. But it's, uh, yeah, please di yeah, disregard the date, the deadline, because the deadline is like, you know, end of June. Yeah, yeah it's and the 25th click, of June. Yeah. Once you click, you know, can you see? Yeah, here the highlighted. Yes. Okay. If you go here. So, uh, okay. Yeah, you have, have all the program description, everything here, eligibility factors and everything available here. And then uh, if you just see here, yes, apply IIE, this is an online platform where you can just go and register. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that you can read uh, online application instruction. Mm -hmm. And once you go click on that, you will be, directed to this platform where you need to register. Yeah, like this. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, so, so you need to create a, an account An first. account, exactly, yes, create an account. Uh, so, and then uh, once, okay, once you just create an account, so you will be just, yeah, mm -hmm. you need to fill, uh, you know, this section this is a and then form like you have to yeah. fill it yeah and then you continue so it goes like that so unless and uh, mm -hmm. one more I thing you, you uh, well i'm sorry navruza you don't need to do it like consecutively in one day okay you uh -huh. have three months this application will be open for three months so once okay. you do one step you will save and do the next step tomorrow okay it's mm -hmm. not something, okay, I need to get everything ready and go and fill it out in one day. No, it will give you like three months. So they, they start step. checking the application after the deadline. Yeah, but you need to make sure that you submit your application before the deadline. 
um, just let me give you some help. Uh, Navruza, I, I believe you, you click this link. This link is for 2022, but you need to go to 2023. Yes. That's why it says that. Yeah, it can do this. Can you, yeah, you can. And uh, also, like, if, if yeah, you see I, the I'm last. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you see the, if you look at the last announcement from the share, English yes. without the borders it. and the uh, U.S. embassy in Dushanbe, so mm -hmm. here it is, and we have uh, Manisha's picture here, I believe. Mm -hmm. So yes, this is the new one. So if you go here, it says uh, FLT 2023. Uh, yeah. uh, you went to 2022. 22. That's why it says that the deadline is kind of over. over. Mm -hmm. It is not. Yeah. Yes. That yeah. can be the case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And this was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you you need to go to the U.S. Embassy website and then it has the, all the announcement, but it it has so many new Incident. ones. You need to click Show More. Just ah, click show uh -huh. more, show more, show more, and it will take you to this program, okay? Okay, okay, I got you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Golnaro. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I think uh, that uh, we don't have any more questions, yeah? So uh, all the questions have been, like, answered. So thank you so much. Uh, Manisha, uh, it was a great pleasure to have this webinar with you and also uh, like uh, we have been able uh, to cover as, uh, as much as possible to, you know, to demonstrate what is Fulbright FLTA from your experience and also we received so many interesting questions. So, and uh, Manisha, just, you know, the last message from you, what would be to our audience who are watching you and will be just you know uh, watching this webinar uh, later on. Yeah. What would be your the, message? my message is the Fulbright FLTA is an amazing, an amazing, an amazing program, and you will never ever regret to apply. Okay, it will transform you from one personality to another. You just what you need to do is just apply yourself. Give some time, give some effort. And you will never ever regret because evil open the next door for you in your future. Okay, so please go for it. You will never yeah, ever you. regret. I'm very, very thankful. This is my family actually, Fulbright. Great, okay, thank you so much, Manisha. So being a speaker today, and uh, thank you very much to all who joined us uh, and also actively participated in Q&A session. So wishing all of you good luck. Please stay tuned on us uh, on English Without Borders on Instagram, on Facebook, and follow our uh, posts uh, to stay with us and also to enjoy uh, English Without Borders uh, online and in-person activities. So wishing all of you to have a great weekend. Uh, we don't say goodbye. We say just see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much, Ms. Nasiba. Thank you. For having Thank me. you a lot. See you soon. Enjoy your stay in the U.S., Manisha. Thank you. And safe trips to you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.